let's get to work. We're using this post system right here. Uh, we're not gonna pour concrete. And uh, this is a drive-in anchor system. You put a four by four in there, you find your spot, you mark it out, it's pretty simple. And just drive that into that spot. And then you square up all your other posts and you're done. So we've got all four posts set. The rest of the posts or any of the other parts will sit on block. Everything else is foundational. It's all set and level, ready to go. So we've got the two side walls up and we've braced everything. We're preparing to do the back wall. And as we do the back wall, we're, we're doing it so where we can go ahead and, and set up for the raised beds. Everything is gonna be framed up for the raised beds. And uh, so let's do this wall and then we'll move to the front where the door will be. three walls built now we move into leveling the other three sides the front wall we're gonna have to do that after we get all this done because there's gonna be a door and there's other framing in but let's go ahead and level up get the top uh, top plate in one tip in particular that I'd like to suggest is when you're doing this by yourself hanging uh, larger pieces in a long run put a ladder at both ends and go ahead and mark off your level line like I've done here and then take two nails or two screws, put them just below that line on either side. That way the board can rest on these when you're working down there. The other thing that I've done is I've already started my screws at every point along the board. So that way when I get the board up here by myself, as soon as I get to that point, I don't have to reach for screws. I just grab my gun, put it in a spot, put the screws in. So now I can work from that end after propping the board up here. The reason why I use two is if we use just one, it has a tendency to tip around a little bit. This will give it exact support and it'll keep it in line with where it needs to be. one screw in to secure it and we can move down to this end and secure this end. With the exterior framing pretty much under control and completed, now we're going to backfill and fill in with some gravel. So then we can start making the raised beds. The lower framing is done and we have backfilled, filled in with gravel. We used uh, number eights. They'll both pack and filtrate went over to our raised beds and we'll talk more about those later and towards the front we still need to put the front uh, pieces on for the door 
and interior they will have raised bed raised bed raised bed and in the center there'll be a table for seed pots and such so we're excited so what we're doing for the lower parts of the bed is we're taking these sheets of uh, metal barn siding and we're cutting them at two foot lengths that gives us two foot height and uh, then we're just basically screwing them in from the back and that will hold more than hold the weight of all the soil and everything and that's the end product that's what the panels are supposed to look like so we'll just keep going around and around and around what we've done now is assemble the interior walls to the beds flip them over and put the metal on the inside so that we don't have to do it while we're crouched down in between the beds the metal is on the panels so now we're going to assemble the three parts to the bed after each part is assembled much like this one it'll have a two by four cap on top It'll join it all together. Sun's going down on another day here at Bar Run Farm. And uh, we are complete with the beds. We still have to do a few items just to fill in the ends and such. But the beds are complete. They're two foot across all the way to the back. We used what metal we had, what sheet metal we had from previous barn projects and other projects around here so it's kind of a hodgepodge but it's an organized hodgepodge how about that we'll go with that the beds have been leveled they're squared everything should be in line where we need it to be as far as the beds are concerned the only thing that needs to be done is the ends need to put on be put on we're going to put some uh, chicken wire and some cloth down in the bottom before we start filling we still need to add the two posts for the door of which we have two of those drive spikes to go in so we can set the posts. Posts will be attached to the top rail. And then we can put start putting metal on. And then put the roof on. The lower framing is essentially done. Got an opening made there for the door. Got all the metal in the bottom. Beds are built. Now we're ready for a roof and sides and to put our soil in. We'll probably do the soil first just so we can uh, do that without having to have any obstructions in the way. All right, now with the framing done on the lower end, we're gonna start concentrating on the roof structure. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with what's called a ridge beam or a ridge pole. And we'll take a two by six, it's 12 foot long, go end to end. We'll create a structure to hold it in the center to begin with, and then we'll work the rafters off of each part there. Ridge pole is install installed, ready for rafters to go on either end. kind of even cool St. Patrick's Day here on Bar Run Farm. The upper structure is complete. The roof structure is complete. Got the purlins on, got the, uh, the, the trusses up, and we are ready to put sheeting on the roof. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. We're going to use a polycarbonate. Now the manufacturer for this product, this particular product, this corrugated polycarbonate sheet recommends that we put these foam backers underneath 
uh, each and every rib and every place that we screw it down. So we're gonna do that. We'll put those on the purlins across there. And we're actually gonna probably pre-drill each one of the holes that we do to try to keep from cracking uh, the polycarbonate. We're gonna be cutting the panels with this four and a half inch angle grinder. It's got a metal cutting blade on it. Seems to do pretty good and doesn't chip it out. So the upper framing is done, the roofing is on, the bed has been installed, and uh, we're ready to start putting, uh, before we put the sides on, we're ready to start putting the, uh, the soil and everything inside. What we're going to do is a version of uh, cubiculture, uh, permaculture, several different ways to talk about it. Now let me fill you in on something. I'm not a pro carpenter. I'm not a pro gardener. I'm just an old farm boy. This is not a tutorial on how to do it. This is a how-do. In other words, how I did it. It is spring here on Bar Run Farm. It's spring enough for mom to be out mowing. So uh, you hear the mower rolling. Let's try to get this taken care of and uh, get some seeds planted. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to take this landscaping cloth and we're going to line the inside of each one of the beds. Uh, that's going to help keep the soil from going through and it's also going to help the uh, moisture to uh, be able to drain out. So we'll have drainage and we'll have uh, prevention against the soil washing away. With the lining put in the beds, we can now start to put in the organic material and go to the compost pile and start filling from there. At that point, we'll add in the amendments uh, such as the peat moss, the topsoil, and some of the other uh, amendments as well. soil mix we're going to use uh, this peat moss we'll use half a bale in each load we use two bags of topsoil uh, a half a bag of compost we're going to put about a cup of tw triple 12 and in a cup of uh, ag lime we've also got some blood meal and bone meal we'll just kind of sprinkle a little bit of that across the top and that will be our soil mix beds are completed they've got their fill of soil and uh, nutrients that they need everything is filled up ready to go. We've already done a full soak over the entire bed twice. Uh, the peat moss sometimes can be a little dry, so kind of working that all in there uh, will help out. So we are done with that portion. Now we can begin to work at uh, enclosing the rest of the greenhouse and the grow house. Stick around. First greenhouse panel is on. It's kind of the prototype. We've made our decision on how we're going to attach them so that they can be removed uh, and put off and on. So that's our next step.
the end of another day, the greenhouse is essentially complete. Let's take an outside walk around. As you can see, we've put in the screening on the inside, and then we've made each of these panels removable. So there's an inside and outside panel. Each one of those panels is held in by four carriage bolts. And each panel can be removed so that it can operate as just a grow house and the screening will keep out the varmints. See right now our blower is blowing. We've got to seal that up yet. A few odds and ends to take care of, but as a whole, it's complete. Got some flashing up on there, take care of on the fascia, and the chickies. Little chicken coop. Final panels went in today. And here is the front. Got the vent down in the bottom there. Just still got to seal it up, but I just installed it. So let's go inside. We just finished up today and outside is about 50 degrees and we have our temperature control fan control right here and a little bit ago it was 79 degrees and i have a setting where it is set on high temperature and low temperature mode it's got a humidity setting a low temperature a high temperature high humidity and low humidity setting so right now the fan is set that it will not come on until it is 95 degrees in here and that is to a thermostat wire which i don't have exactly the way i want it but there it is and it goes up there and then we added in a retractable shade cloth Again, it's not 100% where I want it to be, but it's pretty much ready to go. We used it earlier today and it made a big difference in here. And that shade cloth will be able to be pulled clear to the other side via those cables. So we can shade our plants in here or us if we're in here. Here's the raised beds with the soil in them. We've been soaking that down. It's kind of that peat moss is kind of dry, so we've been soaking that down a little bit so we're gonna have plenty of space in here uh, there's yet to be we're gonna bring electric in uh, it's just a couple feet over that way we're gonna bring it up here and put a light and a couple outlets in here and there's the vent so it's pretty much ready to go 